morning. I was given strict instructions by someone to go ahead and get started so that we could be on time. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but it's the gentleman back there um, in the sound booth. How are y'all? Okay, okay, here we go. Let me try this again. How are you? How are y'all? Good, good. It's good to see you out here today. I know the weather has been terrible. I love rain. Our flower beds at our house need rain and all, but I'm about to get sick of it, you know, so. But it's good that all of you are here. I'm glad that you ventured out in less than wonderful weather uh, to be a part of our service here today. We want to welcome those of you who are viewing us on our Facebook page. We're glad that uh, you are with us here today as we all worship together. A couple of things I'd like to uh, bring up as we're starting. First of all, uh, the flowers that are here on the altar today have been placed here by Sue Trish and Patsy Kaye, uh, Kaye in memory of their mother, Miss Melva Hoffman. So we want to thank them for this beautiful contribution uh, to our service of worship. Also, where's Miss Audrey? She was here. There she is. Today is her birthday. Okay, happy birthday, Miss Audrey, and I, I want to share with you, I hope that your next 42 years have been as wonderful as your first 42 years, okay? Um, and I also want to share with you that I got a wonderful message this week from uh, Reverend Walter Hackney. Uh, some of you might remember him, he was the interim pastor here when this was the uh, the first Union Presbyterian Church, okay, before the merger. And he just sent his best wishes uh, to me and to all of you. And I just wanted to, to share that with you if I could. Um, let me uh, offer you a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, we are continuing to receive monetary donations uh, for our hurricane relief. Uh, those uh, monies are going to uh, our United Methodist Committee on Relief and also our... Um, uh, our conference uh, relief efforts, uh, every penny you give to that fund uh, goes to the people in Lake Charles uh, and to, uh, in the surrounding area to help them uh, uh, overcome uh, what's been going on with this hurricane. And so we want you to encourage you to continue uh, to support uh, that effort. Also, I want you to know that this Tuesday, our men's fellowship is going to reconvene. Uh, we're going to meet at 5 o'clock Tuesday evening at uh, the El Paso restaurant. We have a big, huge table reserved there. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. If you come, and all the men in our church are invited, if you come, you're gonna, this will be the first time you get to see the preacher eat. And every preacher should be judged by how they eat, all right? And also... If you want to see that, be there uh, a Tuesday evening at 5. I'm looking forward to that, and I know that we all are. Uh, let's join together uh, in a spirit of prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this opportunity to worship, to praise your name, and to feel your power and your presence in our lives. We pray that that would happen to us now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Our opening song is Morning Has Broken. Uh, let's stand together uh, as we join in singing. <laughs>
Thank you and be seated. As we come to this time in our service of worship where we take the time to turn to God in prayer, as always, we like to remember those in our church family, uh, our friends and our loved ones who have asked that we remember them uh, in a special way. We want to uh, continue to lift up uh, Sil Callier, Denver King, uh, and Frank, Frank Whiteside and Patricia Zirkel, all who are re- recovering from hospitalizations and and other things, uh, they remain on our prayer list. We want to lift up a special prayer for Lance uh, Lamers. Uh, many of you will remember Lance. Uh, he is going to be having spinal cord surgery in the next few days. They're no longer here, but we want them to know that our prayers and our love are with him and his family. And also, let us continue to remember uh, all of those who have been impacted uh, uh, by this, uh, by the hurricane and, and the weather. Uh, Our prayers and our love remain with them as well. Uh, If you have someone you would like to lift up and remember in this time of prayer, I would just invite you now just to speak their name aloud. Well, let us turn to God now in the spirit of prayer. Almighty God, it would really sort of be foolish for us to tell you everything we want you to hear as we pray together. Because we believe you to be a God who is all-knowing and always present. We know that you know the needs of your people. We know that you know the needs for healing, for comfort, and for strength. And we know that you are present in all of those needs and in all the lives of your children. We want to just thank you for this. We thank you for being The God that you are, a God who loves us deeply, who cares for us in every moment of life. We want to thank you for being a God who is always present with us, no matter what life may bring. And we thank you for being a God who speaks to us, offers us guidance and direction in life. As we celebrate the God that you truly are, we just would simply ask in these moments that you would continue to guide and that you would continue to direct us. Help us to be the best we can be. Not only for you, not only for the church, but for all of your children in this world. Today, O God, we thank you for our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sacrifice that he made on our behalf. We thank you that his death brought us forgiveness of our sins, that his resurrection brought us the assurance of eternal life. We thank you that in Jesus Christ, that forgiveness, that promise, will always be with us because your grace, your love, your forgiveness, your eternity, it's not based any longer on who we are or what we do for you. It's now based on who you are and what you have done for us. We give you thanks. And we give you praise that we can live with this assurance each and every day of our lives. And we do so in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, as we pray to you today, we take the time to pray to you in in some special words. In the words that Jesus taught us to pray when he prayed these words. Our Father... Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, we want to celebrate our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings that we offer to God out of what God has given to us. And as we do so, if you are here and you would like to uh, bring your offering uh, and place it in the offering plate here on the altar, or you can place it in the offering plate that's in the rear, we invite you to do so. Let me remind you that we have our online giving program, uh, and we need that giving to continue uh, in order for us to continue to be the church. So take advantage of that, uh, if you will. Uh, our offertory is a wonderful hymn of faith, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Let us now celebrate this moment of giving. This morning I'm reading from Matthew 25, 1 through 13. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten young bridesmaids who took their lamps and went out to meet the groom. Now five of them were wise, and the other five were foolish. The foolish ones took their lamps but didn't bring oil for them. But the wise, went, the wise ones took their lamps and also brought containers of oil. When the groom was late in coming, they all became drowsy and went to sleep. But at midnight, there was a cry, Look, the groom, come out and meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. But the foolish bridesmaids said to the wise ones, Give us some of your oil, because our lamps have gone out. But the wise bridesmaids replied, No, because if we share with you, there will not be enough for our lamps and yours, we have a better idea. You go to those who sell oil and buy them some for yourself. But while they were gone out to buy oil, the groom came. Those who were ready went in with, to the wedding, and the door was shut behind. Later, the other bridesmaids came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I don't know you. Therefore, keep alert, because you don't know the day or the hour. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Let's join together in a spirit of prayer. Almighty God, we pray now in these moments that you would open our hearts and our spirits to hear and to receive your word. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. There was an who were getting ready to celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary. And as their 60th wedding anniversary gift, their children decided to give them a wedding so that they could um, renew their vows. They didn't have a wedding when they, had, uh, when they got married 60 years earlier. They just went to the justice of the peace and got married and went on about life. So their children wanted to give them the wedding of their dreams, the one they had never experienced before. And they planned it all out to the hilt. They booked the church and they booked the preacher and they ordered flowers and they decorated the church. They found a caterer and they, to cater the reception. And they had this big wedding cake made. 
Uh, the daughters took mom, their mom out to uh, buy a wedding dress, pick out a wedding dress. The sons took uh, their father out and bought him, bought him a tuxedo. They even went to the extremes of renting a limousine and booking the honeymoon suite in the nicest hotel in town. The day of the wedding came and uh, this married couple of 60 years, they showed up at the church. The wedding went off without a hitch. They had a wonderful reception. Everything was going great. And all of a sudden, the limo pulls up and they get into the limo to head off to their, to their wedding night in this fancy, fancy honeymoon suite at the hotel. They got to the hotel, they walked into the room, the champagne was chilled. They poured them a glass of champagne and toasted each other for 60 wonderful years of marriage. And they got ready for bed. As they climbed in the bed, the wife of 60 years said to her husband, she said, Sweetheart, do you remember on our wedding night 60 years ago how we cuddled in bed? In the... Older gentleman said, yeah, I remember that. She said, would you cuddle with me like you did 60 years ago on our wedding night? He said, sure. So he put his arms around her and they cuddled. And then she said, sweetheart, do you remember on our wedding night 60 years ago how you caressed my hair? He said, sure, I remember. She goes, would you caress my hair like you did 60 years ago on our wedding night? He said, sure. So he started caressing her hair. And then she sort of giggled. And she said, sweetheart, do you remember how you nibbled on my ear on our wedding night 60 years ago? He said, sure, I remember. She said, would you nibble on my ear again like you did 60 years ago? He said, absolutely. And he started to get out of bed. And she said, wait a minute, where are you going? I thought you said you were going to nibble on my ear. He goes, I am. I just have to go back into the bathroom and put my teeth back in uh, so I can do that. <laughs> you know, weddings today take a lot of planning, don't they? <clears throat> weddings today take a lot of planning. And isn't it strange how we spend months and months and months planning these weddings and then it's all over in a few hours we go to the church we have the preacher stand up there and he does the wedding it lasts 20 or 30 minutes and then we go to the reception it lasts for a couple of hours and it's off to the wedding night and the honeymoon and after three or four hours it's all done it's all done. That's the way weddings are these days. But you know, weddings today are nothing like the weddings in Jesus' day. Back in Jesus' day, weddings weren't over in a couple of hours. In Jesus' day, weddings would last sometimes three or four days. They would have a lot of different ceremonies and a lot of different religious observances. And they'd have a, a number of different gatherings and celebrations and receptions. Weddings in Jesus' day were three or four day events. And you didn't have just special invited guests who came to a wedding in Jesus' day. No, if you were throwing a wedding in Jesus' day, you had to invite everyone in the community. And in the surrounding area, weddings and those receptions, and all, it was open to the public. So everybody would come. Everybody from town and the surrounding area would attend these weddings. And because of this, to be chosen as a bridesmaid for a wedding was a really big deal. It was a really big deal. If you were chosen to be a bridesmaid at a wedding, you were, had been chosen to have the experience of a lifetime. And there's a reason why. You see, back in Jesus' day, there were two requirements that you had to satisfy if you were going to be a bridesmaid at a wedding. First of all, you could have never been married before. You could have never been married. And secondly, you had to be a virgin. You had to be a virgin. And so to be chosen to be a bridesmaid uh, would tell the whole community that you satisfied those two requirements. But what it also did was the bridesmaids in a wedding in Jesus' day, they were always there with the couple 
with their lanterns. That's what they did. They were always standing there. They were always visible with the wedding couple and everything that went on. So if you were chosen to be a bridesmaid, this was the opportunity of a lifetime for you. Because if you were chosen to be a bridesmaid, you would be in front of every eligible young bachelor in the whole community. And you would be up there. And it was an easy way of saying, look at me. I'm available. And the young women of Jesus' day, they, I, they loved that. They wanted to be chosen as a bridesmaid. Because to be chosen as a bridesmaid meant that you had been chosen to have one of the greatest experiences in life you could ever have. In this parable we read from Matthew's Gospel today, we read about ten bridesmaids who had been chosen they were excited about being a bridesmaid, so they all went and they picked out their dresses and they had their shoes dyed and they had their hair done and they ran over to the mall and went to Dillard's and got their makeover and, and, and all of that and they got ready for the wedding. And they grabbed their lamps and their oil because remember, were required to have those lamps burning brightly at all of the different wedding celebrations. They grabbed their lamps and some extra oil and they took off to the church. And as they got there, they were waiting for the bridegroom to come. But he didn't show up on time. He was late for his own wedding. And so they sat there and they waited and they waited and they waited. And then midnight came. And the bridegroom showed up. Now folks, I want you to know something. If I'm asked to preach a wedding. And the bridegroom hadn't shown up until midnight. I'm out of there. Okay. I'm out of there. But those bridesmaids, they waited patiently. And all of a sudden, he shows up at midnight. And when he shows up, someone yells out, here comes the bridegroom. So what they did was they jumped up to do what they were required to do. They all turned their lamps up so it would burn brightly. And for five of the bridesmaids, their lamps weren't burning. They had run out of oil. They didn't bring enough oil with them to the wedding to keep their lamps burning brightly. And because it wasn't a requirement that those lamps burn brightly, the bridegroom took the five bridesmaids in who had enough oil for their lamps. He took them into the wedding. And for the other five bridesmaids who didn't have enough oil to keep their lamps burning, they were shut out. The door was shut on them. They were shut out. Of having the experience of a lifetime. Now this parable was used. Uh, parable, uh, Jesus uh, shared this parable. Because he wanted to share a lesson with his disciples. About the second coming of Christ. He had been telling them all along. I, when I die and rise from the dead. I will come again. I will come again. I will bring you unto myself. And he said, you need to be ready for that moment. Because nobody knows when it's going to happen. Nobody knows the date nor the hour. So you need to make sure you keep your lamps burning. And so that you're ready when that moment comes. But you know, when I read this passage. And I think about this passage. I think this passage says more to us than... Just some instructions about the second coming of Christ. Because who knows when that's going to happen. It may not even happen in our lifetimes. I don't know. But I think this parable also offers us. Something to think about. In our day to day living. Because the truth of the matter is friends. Jesus Christ has chosen each and every one of us. To be a bridesmaid. He's chosen each and every one of us to have some of the experiences of a lifetime. And those experiences aren't going to come to us just at the end of time when Jesus comes again. I believe that Jesus Christ wants us to have those experiences each and every day of our lives here and now. 
So how is it that we can keep our lamps of faith burning each and every day so that we can have those wonderful experiences that Jesus Christ wants us to have in each and every day of our lives? What is the oil that we need to keep those lamps of faith burning? There was a kindergarten class who was taking a field trip one day. Their field trip was to the local fire station. They were going to go and tour the local fire station. And so they went in and the fire chief was taking them around. They, they got to climb up on the fire truck and they heard the sirens. And they saw all the uh, firemen's outfits and all of that. And they were enjoying their tour of the firehouse. And when it was coming to an end, the fire chief decided to do some educational stuff with the kids. About what to do in case of a fire. And he said the first thing. If you're in a building that catches on fire, the first thing you're supposed to do is get down on your hands and knees. He said, if you're in a building that catches on fire, your house catches on fire, the first thing you do is get down on your hands and knees. And he said, do you know why you're supposed to get down on your hands and your knees? And this little boy said, yeah, you get down on your hands and knees and you pray for God to get you out of this mess. That's why you get down there. You know, friends... Let's be honest here. How often in our lives of faith do we take the time to pray only when we want God to get us out of some mess? How often do we find in our lives of prayer that we pray to God only when there's some kind of a mess going on? And we all do it. I do it. I do it. I think we all do that. Prayer was intended to be much more than that in our lives of faith. I think sometimes we see prayer as just a time for us to sit back and tell God everything we want God to know. Tell God everything we need. Tell God to get us out of this mess and that mess. Tell God that this is what we need God to do. And I think that's evident in the posture that we even take in prayer. I mean, think of what we do when we pray. What do we do? We bow our heads. We close our eyes. Some of us put our hands together. And we tell God everything we want God to know. But friends, that's not all there is to prayer. Because prayer is not only a time for us to speak to God. It's also a time for us to listen to God and listen for God. Sure, prayer is a time for us to bow our heads, close our eyes, and tell God everything we want God to hear. But it's also a time for us to open our eyes, look up, raise our hands to the heaven, and just be quiet and listen. Listen for God to speak. When we take the time to pray, and that time of prayer is a time where we speak to and listen to God, that prayer can become the oil that keeps the lamps of our faith burning brightly. Not only is prayer that oil that keeps the lamps of our faith burning brightly, but so is worship. There was a family who had a young son and he was starting to grow up and they hadn't really gone to church in a long, long time. He had never been in church before. So they decided they needed to get into church as a family. They wanted their son raised in the church. So one Sunday morning they got up, they got dressed and they went to this church that was just down the street from where they lived. They walked into the church and one of the ushers greeted uh, them and uh, he asked them, uh, you know, if they were first time visitors. They said, yes, we've never been here before. And he was very gracious. He walked them in and he ushered them over to, to a seat. Uh, and he set them down in the pew and then he handed them a bulletin for the service. And he left and went back to the foyer. The young son, I guess he was maybe four or five years old. He was sitting there. He goes, Dad, who was that man that just made us sit down here? 
And the father said, he's an usher. And the young boy said, what's an usher? He said, well, the usher's kind of like the waiter at the restaurant. You know, when we go to a restaurant to eat, we have a waiter who takes us and puts, sits us down at our table and all of that. He goes, oh, so the usher's like a waiter, huh? He goes, yeah. And he goes, what's that piece of paper he gave you? And the father said, well, that's a bulletin. And he said, what's a bulletin? He said, well, it's kind of like the menu, uh, you know, uh, that the uh, that." That, that the waiter gives us at a restaurant, you know? It's kind of like a menu. And the young boy said, that's a menu he gave you? And the father said, yes. And he goes, well, Dad, when this is over, don't you give him a tip. Because he didn't give me a kid's menu with color crayons. Friends, let's look at what's on the menu for worship. What's on the menu for worship? I got our order of worship right here. What's on the menu? First of all, on our menu for worship is praising and glorifying God and bringing honor to God. We do that in the music that we sing in worship, in the hymns that we sing, in the beautiful music that Beth and, and Paul offer us. And they do a great job of it because as I say, Good music covers up bad preaching in this church every Sunday. The music of worship is the way we praise and glorify God. We have time of prayer. A time of prayer is a part of our worship. We have a time of giving that's a part of our worship. Where we give our tithes and our offerings to God. We hear from God's word. And then we listen and we try to understand what that word is trying to say to us. And then when it's all ready to be over, what do we experience? We experience an invitation. An invitation from God. And we answer that invitation to be the best we can be for God. And to respond to God's word and God's presence in our lives. By committing ourselves to being the disciples of Jesus Christ. That's what's on the menu of worship. That's what we do each and every Sunday that we come here and that we worship. But you know, worship was never intended to be something we do once a week on Sunday morning here in a beautiful church building. Worship was intended to be something that's a part of each and every day of our lives. And when we take the time each and every day of our lives to praise and to glorify God. When we take the time each and every day of our lives to, to pray, to speak to God, and then to listen to God. When we take the time each and every day of our lives to give a part of ourselves to God, to immerse ourselves in God's word, to listen to God speak to us through that word. When we take the time each and every day of our lives to commit ourselves to being the people we need to be for God. And we accept that invitation to do so. When worship becomes a part of our everyday lives. then worship becomes the oil that keeps the lamps of our faith burning. You know, friends, each and every one of us here today, Jesus Christ has chosen us to be a bridesmaid. And I know some of you are men, and you're not interested in getting your hair done or your shoes dyed or a makeover at Dillard's. That's not what we're talking about. Each one of us have been chosen by Jesus Christ to have some of the experiences of a lifetime. And those experiences can be felt not only in the life that is to come when Jesus comes again, but those experiences of a lifetime can be felt right here in the here and the now. As long as we can keep the lamps of our faith burning brightly. And the oil that keeps the lamps of our faith burning brightly is prayer. Taking time to speak to God and listen to God. 
The oil that can keep our lamps of faith burning brightly is worship. Each and every day, praising and glorifying God. Giving of ourselves. Immersing ourselves in God's word. Answering that invitation to be the best we can be for God. When that prayer and that worship becomes a part of our everyday lives. Then the lamps of our faith will burn brightly. And Jesus Christ will bless us with some of the most incredible experiences we could ever know in life. The question for us today is, how's our wedding planning going? How is our wedding planning getting along? Do we have enough oil to keep our lamps of faith burning brightly? Would you join with me in a spirit of prayer? Almighty God, we give you thanks for the rich and incredible life that you offer to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And we pray, oh God, that we might be ready, that we might be ready to experience all that Christ offers us. Help us, oh God, to have enough oil for our lamps. Help us to be a people of true prayer. Help us to be a people of true worship. So that in each and every day of our lives, we can have those incredible experiences that you desire to share with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Our closing song is a great hymn of our faith, To God Be the Glory. We're going to stand together as we're going to join in singing. And as we sing this hymn, if you're here today and you would like to profess your faith in Jesus Christ, become a Christian here today, we want to invite you to come forward as we sing. If you're here today and you'd like to unite with this church by transferring your membership from another congregation, we invite you to come forward as we sing. In whatever way God's Spirit might be leading you to answer that question, do I have enough oil for my lamp? Whatever way you need to respond to that, I invite you to do so as we sing this closing hymn together. To God be the glory. To God be the glory.
our wedding planning going these days? Do we have enough oil for our lamps? Are we ready to experience some of the incredible moments of life that Jesus Christ affords us? With all of that in mind, to you, my brothers and my sisters in Christ, go in peace. Sin no more. Love God and serve God's people. Amen. Praise the Lord.